Texting and driving? Oh, sell no. Cacao. <laughs> Oh, there's some geese. What the hell? Dude, they're fucking right here. They're just chilling, look. They just landed. And now I'm afraid to get out of my fucking truck. Y'all ever played the goose, the untitled goose game? Geese are dicks. Anyways, I'm at my receiver here. I'm in uh, Puyallup, Washington, the state. It's been a crazy last couple days. I got 1,500 miles in two days. So, yes, that means I drove 750 miles a day for two days straight, uh, and uh, then I ran out of clock, so I couldn't get the load delivered early. So I feel like this week's going to be bad, uh, be, bad being it's going to be in the negative. Just I'll find out once uh, once I actually get paid. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. But uh, so I'm going to talk about my pay so far, the first three weeks at least. Uh, that I've worked here and this video has been a long time coming. I've just been lazy because I've been driving my ass off So when I stop, it's like I gotta clean my truck. I gotta do laundry. I gotta fucking eat You know, I do all this shit uh, And now I'm sitting here for another 30 minutes or so 29 minutes or so uh, Because a lady I walked in and she's like Nobody's at the desk, right? So I walk in and out of nowhere she's like first of all i was like oh like whoa whoa all right first of all i need you to park over here by the dumpster and i got like this vibe from her like yeah go out there and park next to the trash you fucking piece of trash you know that that's the kind of vibe and then she said uh this is what sealed it she goes second of all we don't open till seven and then she just walks away she doesn't even let me talk to her at all and i'm like what if i had questions bitch so whatever i'm here um, that was rude, but I'm not gonna let it mess my day up or anything. Uh, and then, you know, I got to use the restroom and there's a restroom in that, in that room. And now the door's locked. I guess she forgot to lock it and now, she, now it's locked or maybe I locked it walking back out. I don't know. But anyways, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of what y'all came here to, uh, to, well, anybody's interested in Anybody that's anybody likes to know about what truck drivers make on the road and I've always been an advocate of sharing what you make No matter where you're at because that If you're not talking about how much money you make you're just protecting the company There's no reason you shouldn't be sharing what you pay what you're paid to see if you're getting what you're worth so that's why I've always not been shy about sharing my like straight up posting my fucking settlements at prime uh Really, when it comes to truck drivers, it's what you're worth. You're showing what you're worth by showing how much you get paid. And that's especially prevalent in, uh, well, mostly with luck, with, you know, splitting the rates. You know, you're, you're, you're driving for cent, not cents per mile. You drive for dollars per mile. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you get however much percentage of gross from what that load is actually shipping for. If you're driving for 60 cents a mile, you're losing a shit ton of money because especially in flatbed because I don't think I've driven for less than three dollars a mile for any load that I've taken so far and I've been doing this for four weeks so I and these checks are gonna show you despite all of my my break-evens not including fuel I'm still gross I'm still netting I've netted eleven thousand dollars eleven thousand five in three weeks okay so that's great fucking money. That's good money. That is what you need to be paid. That is great because you're spending time away from home and your family misses you. You miss your family. You're out here every single day. You're you're risking your life driving. You got to deal with dumb asses on the road. You know, you got to watch yourself. You're you're moving potentially 80,000 pounds worth of shit across the country and you got to be safe while you're doing it. And nobody really understands if you're not a driver that if you're in a busy area and all you're doing is driving right all you're doing is driving all day long you're scanning constantly to, to watch traffic and to see what's up ahead and to make sure there aren't any animals in the road that's taxing on you it's really taxing on you but fuck four and a half minutes in let's get to it so overall my break even not including fuel okay this is gonna sound like a lot because it is um and the truck payment is mostly where all that 
that money's going to. So my break even for the week, what I have to make so that I don't owe money is $2,395.96. So almost $2,500 a week I'm having to pay to operate this vehicle. That's the truck payment, which is $1,100 a week, which will drop after a year unless I pay it off early. Now I'm gonna, I've been looking at options of refinancing the truck um, to get myself a set pay structure and actually get it, the truck out from under who I'm leasing it from. So then the bank owns it and I'm paying the bank versus I'm still paying my company to, to get the truck. That way the truck is mine, you know, and then I can work on paying that off early or whatever. Um, $50, $55 for registration and tax fees. Uh, $230 for insurance, uh, liability, I believe. Uh, $120 for bobtail insurance. $15 for the ELD. We use a motive or keep trucking. So it's $15 a week. Uh oh. Is he going to come tell me? Hold on. We got to pause for a second. All right. Sorry. All right, we had a quick, quick out real We had to get out real quick to uh, move the truck. Because he's like, You want to turn around, man? Because once they put, once people start coming in, you're going to get blocked. I was like, All right. Yeah. Thank you. Jesus. So yeah, uh, we went through the whole uh, 250 for uh, security deposit. I'm renting the trailer for $275 a week. Um, after, I forget after how long. I think once the truck's paid off, I don't have to pay for the trailer anymore. Like to rent it. Because this is my trailer. Like it's, I'm never detaching from this trailer unless I need a bobtail somewhere, which I haven't had to do in four weeks so far. Uh, and then $300, $350 goes to a maintenance account. And I think that builds up to 5,000 and then that will stop. Maybe, I don't know. The security deposit stops after 2,500 in the tractor security deposit and then 2,500 in the trailer security deposit. So in a couple months, hopefully that'll that'll fall off. So I'll save that. So 2,395, 96 every week I'm paying, not including fuel. Now, fuel is your most expensive expense. Yes. So with that being said, in the past three to four weeks, I've spent on average about $2,500 to $4,500 a week in fuel because fuel is astronomically high right now. I just dropped another $1,000 today filling it up from half a tank because I know in California, because that's where I'm heading, fuel is fucking, I think it's at like $7 a gallon now. So I'm trying not to, I know that it, it washes itself out with the if the tax and shit like that. You get credit, if to credit and all this other shit if you buy fuel there. But when it's hitting my bottom line right now, like I, I want to try to save fuel where I can. So the first week I only worked four or five days. Uh, I made gross or net to the truck or net to myself. What I paid myself, what I got, my business and myself, we got... 39.82.10. So that's almost four thousand dollars on my first check. Granted, I didn't, uh, I didn't get a truck payment, and they, he kind of halved everything uh, as far as the insurance and security deposit and all that stuff. He, he waived a lot of that, those fees. Uh, the second week wasn't that, wasn't that great of a week. I only made, well, I say I only made three thousand dollars that week. Uh, three thousand eleven dollars and forty six cents. And. Yeah, sorry if it changed. The, the truck was off, and now it's now I have it on. I'm idling, which I probably shouldn't. I don't need to. It's nice and cool outside, so there you go. It's a little better. And then last week I had a ten thousand dollar gross week, and I well, it was a little over ten thousand dollars, and I I netted with my truck payment and everything forty four hundred sixteen dollars and eighty seven cents. Now I own a business. Uh, I own my own business, Trucker Dude Transportation. And the way that I'm doing it right now is, it, I've been talking with all these fucking people lately too. It's just been such a hassle and it's like, they're trying to sell me more shit. And it's like, I don't need more shit. What do I need business credit for? I don't plan on starting a fleet. I don't plan on uh, buying any more trucks. If anything, I'll trade this truck in and buy a newer model or something later on down the road when I have this one paid off and I've made my money with it. Uh, you know, I don't plan on like opening up a franchise somewhere or doing something like that. This I if I don't have the money for something I don't need it, so I don't need business credit or anything like that. I, I don't need to look good to lenders unless I uh, really. The bottom line is I, I want to find a bank to refinance this truck. That's it. And if I got the money in the bank to just go straight up without having to go through anybody else to refinance the truck, 
that's what I'll do. But I don't need to borrow, you know, maybe a lower interest rate or something like that or whatever. But if they see that I'm, I've got this much money down and the interest rate's de decent, then why the fuck wouldn't I just do that? Because I wouldn't be paying on this truck for five years at $4,400 a week or uh, $4,400 a month for the first year and then maybe $3,800 $3, a, a, a month next year and then it subsequently goes down $100 each, each year that passes. So like, why not just give myself one flat rate of a lower payment each week or each month and go from there? So that's the plan because that's my truck payment. Once that's paid off, you're out of debt with a truck. You're making that much more money each week. And with fuel prices the way that they are, you know, I could be making, I could be making so much more money right now. Way, so much more money. And I, some of y'all are like, well, that's a lot of money already. Yeah, I've made $11,410.43, not including this week that I just finished. And I just grossed, I think I grossed about $12,000 this week. Um, granted, I had to deliver on Tuesday. And Monday is the payroll cutoff. So I'm wondering if they were able to slap that onto this last pay. Or if not, then I'm going to go negative this week. And then I'm going to have a fat-ass fucking check next week. Like, unreal check but it's, you know that's just the way that it works out here in trucking so what I do so far with my company and myself is I split it 50 50 I give myself 50 percent of the net profits and then I put 50 percent into my business account net profits until I reach a certain amount of money that I feel comfortable with I think I want to keep at least at minimum twenty thousand dollars in the in my business account and once I reach that I may dip a little more into the personal or I don't know how we're gonna work it out yet I talked to my business advisor. Um, I went through Inc. Authority to uh, start my business, and they they got they assigned me this business counselor. And she's like, "Oh, we can schedule a call to talk." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, I have questions or whatever." And for one, she does she's not even a truck she doesn't work with truck drivers, so she doesn't know what the hell I need to be doing as a business owner as a truck driver. I have specific wants and 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 desires. That is, I just did the bit. I just started a business. Because my company that I'm leasing through required that I do it. So that's the only reason why. I'm not trying to be like another Elon Musk or some shit and get all this borrowing power and stuff. No. I literally just want my business account as a savings for the truck. Uh, or if I want to upgrade and get another truck one day or I want to do some specific shit to this truck, I have a business account to take care of everything to do with the truck. Plus the tax write-offs and the separation from person to business so if something happens then i'm covered you know if i file for bankruptcy i could just let my business go and i should be fine but she called me and it was literally just her trying to sell another product to me for fifteen hundred dollars to to get my business score up to like an 830 or something like that or an 80 which i think personal business or personal credit with like Equifax and TransUnion is like, I think it's a what? 300 to a 800 or something, 300 to a 900 score. With a business account, it's zero to 100. And they say that they can get you up to an 80 in about six months to a year when it would take somebody normally seven years to get up that high. And I'm like, okay, well, what what is that gonna do to benefit me and what I wanna do in my business? I literally just need this business to pay for shit to do with the truck. I don't use my personal funds or anything like that to pay for the truck. They're like, well, we could get, we could save you on fuel. I'm like, I'm already part of a fuel network with the company that I work for. And I get up to 88 cents off the gallon. Uh, so, and they're like, yeah, but you can keep on giving them that everything and, and the insurance you're paying for with them. And it's like, it's, it's severely discounted, I imagine. I don't know, two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars a week, uh, in insurances plus bobtail insurance is one hundred twenty dollars a week. That's pretty expensive. Um, if you if you add it up for the month, you know. So if I when I take, I'm going home this week. Uh, I'm gonna I'm up in Washington. I plan on being home sometime next week, probably the day after Memorial Day, because I don't think that they'll take this load that I'll be taking from California to Texas uh, on Memorial Day. They might be closed. So. This might not be the best week because going from west all the way back out east is always a shit show when it comes to pay. Uh, coming from east to west is great. 
but going back is, is a shit show. So I try to find light loads out here. Like the last load that I brought out here was 4,000 pounds. I was flying over these mountains. If I had wings on the truck, I would have been able to glide down. Um, and then I'm at a insulation plant here right now waiting to go in, which I'm almost, it's almost time for me to go in there. And it's only 8,000 pounds and I'll be taking that into California. So I'll get out of this mountainous treacherous fucking area with a lighter load. Uh, and then that'll cons conserve on fuel. Plus the speed limit, I think from here to California is 60 miles an hour. So I'll be forced to go 60 miles an hour. Coming over here was 75, 80 miles an hour, but of course I only go 75. Sorry. Ugh. You wouldn't think I'd be tired. I was sitting for 20 hours yesterday. I, I delivered my load first thing in the morning and I got to the truck stop at 7.30 in the morning and I was supposed to be here about 40 minutes away at seven o'clock the following day. So I was well over 20 hours in birth. Uh, oh my God, I left personal conveyance on, Jesus Christ. I just had to turn around, and it's been on for 11 minutes. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyways, uh, I'll go and fix that. Anyways, I, yeah, so there it is. That's what I've been I made so far. And this month, this week, if I had to guess, it would have been another five, four to $5,000 net pay. So I would have been at $16,000 in one month. That's what I've made so far as, an, as a lease operator. Some people are like, well, you technically, you don't own the truck, but... My payments are going towards me owning the truck. So tank, I mean, overall, I'm responsible for this truck. I'm own I'm gonna own this truck. Of course the title's not in my fucking name, but I'm an owner operator. I am paying for this truck. This is gonna be my truck. This is my truck. And I'm paying for it. Now technically it won't be mine until I got title in hand. But I'm working towards it. It's the same thing as like, oh, I got my car. No, the bank owns your car or whatever financial institution you went through owns your car. You don't own your car. That's just, it's the same shit. So shut the fuck up. Remember, just ladies, love it, hate it, fucking rate it. Take care. I'll see you all another time.